All righty. Shark Attack by Kathy Eastabowski. Today we will be reading chapters one and two for the students that were absent yesterday. And then today in class, we read chapter three. All righty. Table of contents, which have our page numbers and our chapters. Chapter one, Shark Attack. Ronnie Fox had almost run out of time. He needed to find a big fish and he needed to find it soon. The young Australian was competing in an annual spearfishing championship. To win, he had to find and catch a big local fish. Ronnie had won the contest last year and he wanted to win again. But today something would happen. Something that would change his life forever. Like all the other competitors in the contest, Ronnie wore a line fixed to his dive belt to hold the fish that he had caught. He and the other divers who had been diving in the water for several hours already. They had caught a lot of fish and the water smelled of blood. About half a mile or one kilometer offshore, Ronnie spotted a huge morwong, just the fish that he needed to win. Carefully, he aimed his spear gun at the fish. Crash! Something slammed hard into Ronnie's side. He felt as if he had been hit by an express train. It was a great white shark. The force of the impact knocked his mask off his face and the spear gun from his hand. His left shoulder disappeared down the creature's throat, and then the shark bit down on Ronnie's chest and back. Ronnie struggled to get free. He hit the shark with his fist, but the shark held tight and shook him back and forth. Then Ronnie remembered the weakest spot on a shark's body, its eyes. With all his strength, he rammed his right fist straight into the shark's eye, and incredibly, the shark let go. Bleeding and running out of air, Ronnie struggled towards the surface. Could he make it to safety before the great white shark ate him alive? Ronnie reached the surface and gasped for air. He made it, but then he looked down. The shark was racing straight for him. Its huge jaws lined with razor sharp teeth were wide open. Snap. The shark's jaws slammed shut again, but this time the shark swallowed the fish attached to Ronnie's dive belt. But suddenly, Ronnie felt himself being pulled through the water. He was still attached to the line. The shark began to drag him down into the deep water. He struggled to undo his dive belt, but the buckle had slipped around his back and he couldn't reach it. Time was running out. If the shark didn't eat him, Ronnie would drown. Suddenly, the line snapped. Ronnie was free. He struggled to the surface and shouted for help. Luckily, friends in a nearby boat had seen the blood and quickly pulled him out of the water. Rodney was seriously hurt. His rib cage, lungs, and the upper part of his stomach lay open from the huge gash where the shark had sunk its teeth in. The bite had crushed his ribs and punctured one of his lungs. Rodney was rushed to the hospital. Four hours of surgery and 462 stitches saved his life, but he would wear the ugly scar of the shark's bite forever. The attack on Rodney was big news. The public, frightened of more attacks, demanded action to clear the local beaches of sharks. But Ronnie thought differently. Ronnie Fox is one of the few people to have survived the bite of a great white shark like this. And then here is Ronnie Fox with his scar from his attack. Ronnie didn't want to go out and kill sharks. He wanted to go out and learn more about the mysterious creature that had nearly killed him. And he began a lifelong search to find out more about these silent hunters of the deep. Only a few months after the attack, Ronnie was diving again so he could study sharks up close. Ronnie designed and built the first shark cage. Ronnie Fox still dives with sharks and is now trying to save them from extinction. A shark cage is about the size of a small elevator car. It is made of very strong metal bars, which are placed close enough together to keep a shark from biting the divers inside, but still allow the divers a good view of the sharks. Floats at the top keep the cage from sinking. Today, many people use shark cages. They allow divers and scientists to study and photograph sharks up close, but not quite as close as Rodney. Chapter 2, Great White Shark Adventure. Experience the adventure of a lifetime.
You'll be guided by dive instructors and shark research experts to see the great white shark in its natural habitat. Inside of the diving cage, you will be safe and secure and still feel the thrill of experiencing what it is like to swim with sharks. You can move around comfortably with an all-around view. Diving safely to see the sharks prevents shark fishing in the area. By supporting us, you are helping us protect sharks and their habitat. Rule. Must be age 18 or older to dive with sharks. And chapter 3 from today. Shark attacks the facts. If you're terrified of sharks, you're not alone. Shark attacks make frightening headlines, and movies like Jaws spread the fear that sharks are bloodthirsty killers. In fact, many people are scared just by the thought of sharks. But the truth is that shark attacks are actually very rare. A person is far more likely to be hit by a car or struck by lightning than be attacked by a shark. There are more than 350 different species or types of sharks. And of these, only about 30 have ever been known to attack humans. But there are three that are really dangerous. The great white shark, the bull shark, and the tiger shark. A tiger shark is large and powerful enough to attack most sea creatures. The bull sharks are actually one of the few sharks that can live in both fresh and seawater. And the great white shark is the most feared and fearsome of all the sharks. It has even been known to attack boats. Whether or not you are in danger of a shark attack depends on where you live in the world. Sharks are found almost everywhere, but they seem to prefer warm water. Most shark attacks happen in Australia, Brazil, California, Florida, Hawaii, and South Africa. They often occur near crowded beaches where people go to swim and surf. And surf. But even in a very bad year, sharks attack no more than 80 to 100 people in the whole world. And modern transportation and medical care mean that only about 10 to 15 of those people who were attacked will die. Even then, sharks don't usually set out to attack people. Often they ignore people in the water, so then what makes a shark attack a human? Some people believe that sharks attack when they feel threatened. A diver may unknowingly swim into a shark's territory. In this case, a shark may only bite a human once. It will then release rather than eat the invader. Perhaps this is what happened to diver Henry Borse. A single bite from a large shark resulted in him losing a leg. Divers are sometimes attacked while carrying fish, fish that they have caught. The blood and the frantic movements of the dying fish attract sharks who can smell blood from a good, a good great distance. Sometimes a shark could, be an, uh, could attack could be a case of mistaken identity. From a shark's point of view, a surfer or bodyboarder looks like its favorite food, a seal. Once the shark has a taste of the board, it will spit it out and go away. Many surfers are still alive to tell the tale with a munch surfboard to prove it. So here's Henry Borse, who was attacked. They believe he went into the shark's territory. And of course, from the shark's point of view, this is what they see when they look up. So we happen to look similar to their favorite fruit, the seal. And that is why usually people that are on boards will get attacked. Another reason they may attack is because a shark is very hungry. Experts think that Raymond Short was attacked by a hungry shark while swimming in the water off the crowded Australian beach. Raymond was swimming near the shore when he was bitten by a shark. Six lifeguards immediately dashed into the sea to save him, but as they started to carry Raymond towards the shore, the lifeguards realized that the shark was still attached to Raymond's leg. Raymond had to be pulled right onto the beach before the shark let go of his leg. The shark had a long cut or wound along his stomach. It had been badly injured. Scientists think that the shark had been unable to catch its normal food and was so hungry that it took a unusual risk. So there are many different reasons why sharks attack humans. Another strange attack took place in a very unexpected place, a creek. 12-year-old Lester Stilwell was swimming with his friends in Matawan Creek in New Jersey, but suddenly he screamed and disappeared beneath the water. A man named Stanley Fisher rushed into the creek to drag Lester's lifeless body from the water, but then suddenly Stanley felt something bump his right leg, and when he reached down, he realized that part of his leg had been ripped away. They had been attacked by a shark, and then tragically, both of them died from their wounds. 
Was this attack really so strange? Not if you know about sharks. Even though the shark was never found, it was most likely a bull shark, a species that lives in both salt and fresh water. Alrighty, that was chapter three. And again, if you were absent yesterday, I did go ahead and read chapters one and two for yesterday. We will continue with chapter four tomorrow. Bye, guys. Have a good day.